we have nicely moved our uh, code into the test package and main package. And if you wonder what happened behind the scene, you can show in into the project explorer and you will see, oh no, I should be choosing show in a project for system explorer. Um, system explorer is open in another window. So just, I'm gonna drag and just give me a second, here you go. So we didn't do much actually in the source, we created a main and test and main is here and all the Java codes are here and test is here, all of them here. So just it's we created two folders, but we need to do this through here. It's packages and because in the, uh, in the project file, I believe these are used different, pa uh, different tags to address them. Okay, let's move on to our first refactoring. Let's close this window, go back to our slides. So self-checking test, unit test we have added, right? Let's look at some of the stuff after this. So we were talking about the statement method, overly long method doing many things. What can we do about this big method, right? So decomposing and redistributing the statement method. So we want to slice this big, huge method. Let's look at the code. Oops, where is our Eclipse? Here it is. And if you go to customer, Look at the statement starts from here, goes down and it's long. So, so and doing so much stuff, we would like to refactor this one. So when I look at long method like that, I am looking to decompose the method into smaller pieces. We will slice that. So let me have this highlighter. Smaller pieces of code tend to make things more manageable and you can name them nicely. Otherwise it's big, like a warm kind of thing and it is there's no compartment later on if you have this kind of stuff we can manage upgrade and do stuff and improve our code they are easier to work if it's small piece and move around so that's our goal so the first thing is let's learn extract method refactoring you have a code fragment that can be grouped together turn the fragment into a method whose name explains the purpose of the method so names are so important so look at this as an example. You have a print owing uh, function and it has a print banner. It actually this gives us some clue. And we have this comment, you see, it says also, can you extract me into my own function? So we can say print details function we can extract and call from that one. So print owing, if you look at now, print banner and print details. Of course, we need to have this get outstanding one we can pass if it's a member variable actually we don't need to pass we can call inside of here as to making a parameter we can call that one but let's do step by step not all of them at once and if you look at here we have same level of complexity this function is not dealing with any system out print line something it's calling like a little bit manager of the other functions other methods we are using. So this is called extract method. You are extracting some code piece into its own method and we call this extract method. So how do we do it uh, for extract method? The steps are create a method named after intention of the code. So we create this method, okay. Look, uh, copy the extracted code. So we copy, not cut, okay, we copy here. Look for local variables and parameters turn into parameter, turn into returns value, declare within method. So we will look at, but there is no return value needed in here, right? And we can send a parameter. We send this one uh, into here as a parameter and declare within the method. So we don't need any of them. We compile. So look at this, we didn't cut this one. We compile, we make sure this code base is working. There are several steps. We will be doing step by step, but I'm just giving you the story. And later on, what do you do? Replace the code fragment with the call to new method. So we'll remove this part together and call to this code we just have. So then that's it. And then we compile and test again. And if things are working, you are good. Move to the next one. That's it. So we are not using refactoring tool because there is an extract function, extract method refactoring. We can do it, but a full with a tool is still a fool. So let's learn how to use, you know, hammer, how to use a ladder, and later on we can automate the things. But if you don't know any of those things, 
things will be really uh, hurtful and to the code and then you may have some issues so let's do it manually first i give also this example to the drill you know i'm trying to make a drill over here if you don't know how to use a screwdriver you know let's say this is a phillips screwdriver you shouldn't move to do this drill because you may harm yourself and also you know your wrist because when you move to this is very strong one or you can harm to the wood because you just use over force and then you harm it. So the material, so you should start step by step. Learn first, this, uh, do it by yourself and then later on you can upgrade yourself to the tool. So we are not using any uh, auto refactoring uh, tool. We will handcraft all the refactoring. So, okay. So the first thing is extract method in here. So what are we going to do is your job and you can pause the video if you want and try it by yourself and come and restart this uh, i mean start hit the play button and continue so uh, go to the large method customer let's see where is our customer sorry here it is and what is the next step extract method on the switch statement in the middle so look at this oops again this switch statement over here we want to extract this one okay so we make a method for uh, in the same class for it in the same class in the customer here is it is in the customer right look at here it's the customer and go back here the local data the switch code uses from the statement method must be passed as an argument so if the switch part is using any of the variables we should be passing as an argument and we will see that and compile and run the test and name your function amount for for now we can name it later on and returning integer to be consistent within the class okay that's your job pause this video and then come back so i'm continuing and now i believe you did pause or you know you wanted to watch it that's okay so what is my plan is to extract this one so let's follow the guidelines and create an int amount for. So I'm going to create here a function. Currently, I will can I can say public int amount for. Not a great one, right? Because this is not a verb. Generally, we uh, we use verb for the functions and we use names for the variables, right? So amount for, and this function is ready, but it's not returning anything. So I'm going to copy this code piece here and paste over here. And if I look at here, this each is I need to pass. So what is this each? Okay, looks like each is a rental. So I'm going to copy here and pass as a parameter. And, and also another parameter, this amount. Should I be passing this amount to here? Let's look at here. This amount is a local variable over here. And this amount is just updated at the end of the switch statement. So it looks like I should be returning this amount at the end, right? So let's, uh, this, I guess I, okay, this is not greatly formatted. I will do this and, and I will return this amount but this amount i didn't create it yet so i will just create here uh, this amount and and initialize it to zero okay okay so currently i have this function i can run my test i didn't do any integration anything so this is we are applying right this extracted this method but we are not using it yet so we need to do a test for that. So I'm going to copy this one, amount four, and this part, we will be replacing it, right? This part. And when I do this, amount four, and I will pass what? Because this is reading needing this one, rental, each. Okay, this is okay. But this amount and I'm sorry, the function name is amount for. Amount for, we are just calling this one. 
but the value we returned we should be adding into this amount right because it is calculating it so i can do this plus equal to amount for so i will be adding that one so i will run my test oh it's i'm breaking something it's not working so when i look at i lost some of the values you see this is the beauty of unit testing so i'm breaking some stuff i'm going to close and this amount for and i look at here i'm adding two i'm adding one and a half did you see that and so this is an integer i created so this is a problem, right? I'm going to make this double. I can retest. Yeah. So actually this compiler becomes smart. So it says this is a double and you are returning integer. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm going to make this double too. Save it. Rerun test. All green. We love this one. So it looks like I did my first refactoring perfectly. And I have confidence because my unit tests are working and extract method function work great. So let's look at the steps we have made. Uh, we just, you know, method for it in the same class. The local data, okay, we do we all those things. But let me go a little bit back and I show you this one. And we copy the extracted code. If we need to send parameters, we send it. We compile it. And later on, we replace the code fragment with the call to the new method. So we have done that. But let's see what we have done in this with the slides. So this is the part we need to extract. And we will call after that this one. It didn't use plus equal to in here because it starts from zero. I wanted to make sure plus equal to because if there's a previous value, I don't want to lose it. So this is you know just defensive coding. It's up to you. So amount for is good. We have int and this is causing a problem now because it compiler catches it. So we had a problem. The previous version doesn't work. Yeah. So what will happen? We just fix it. So things are the small steps, which is the tip we are using them, right? Usable tips. Refactoring changes to program. Uh, refactoring changes the programs in small steps. If you make a mistake, it is easy to find the bug. Okay, to keep calm and take one step at a time. This is really important. Don't rush. Otherwise, it will cost you time and buggy code and small one. I like this one. I am a slow walker, but I never walk backwards. So if you don't want to move backwards, just move slowly. So we will, we will come to this one in the next video. Thank you.